السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف إن مناجاة الراجين one of the 15 whispered prayers of Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam is مناجات الراجين which is for those who are hopeful so in this munajat we read like this Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ya man iza sa'alahu abdun a'atah wa iza ammala ma'indahu ballagahu munah O the one who has this characteristic that whenever a servant asks him for something, he gives. So Allah is such a kind and generous master that whenever a servant asks him for something, he gives. This is the general rule. If he doesn't give, there must be a reason. Sometimes it's opposite. There are people that they don't give. If they give, you are surprised. Why, you know, today he was kind with me. Maybe today he had, you know, some great, I don't know, achievements or business or <laughs> Or maybe, for example, he's showing off. I don't know. Some people, when they give you, are surprised and sometimes you are shocked. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is his norm. There can be exceptions. But then we have to find what was the reason. Maybe it didn't suit the servant. Maybe it was too early maybe he had to work more maybe if he gives to this servant other servants feel sad you know sometimes we create problems for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because allah wants to give us something but then other people will envy so he has to you know delay or stop or give something else like you know sometimes maybe one of your children wants you something you don't have any problem but then you see what about other children what about other people's children so this is uh, something that can stop the general norm happen but the general norm is and if the servant has hope in what is with him, he would enable him to reach his desire. This is more, I think, a spiritual. The first is you ask Allah something, he gives you. The second is for the people who want things that are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not worldly things. For example, they want ma'rifah, they want hikmah, they want basira, they want mahabba, they want high position, they want shafa'ah. These are the things that are in the who. And these are more important than the first category. Your first category can be general, but has different levels. This is high level. إِذَا أَمَّلَ مَا عِنْدَهِ when he wants, as a matter of hope, something that is in the who is in the law. Some of you remember the discussion we have had about in the and in the law. What does it mean in Quranic series also? 
So Allah would enable that person, servant, to reach Muna, his dream, his desire. وَإِذَا أَقْبَلَ عَلَيْهِ قَرَّبَهُ وَأَدْنَا Again, the norm is that if a servant comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah would not stop him or would not block him. Indeed, Allah qarrabahu. Allah brings him nearer. Wa'adna. To know again means qurb. Allah brings him very near. Like if we go to a meeting of a great personality, if we reach that room and we feel shy or embarrassed to enter and sit close to that person, even he would see us, he would say, you know, please come nearer. So Allah brings near. وَإِذَا جَاهَرَهُ بِالْعِسْيَانِ سَتَرَ عَلَى ذَنْبِهِ And if God forbids this servant publicly disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is very bad and to disobey Allah is very bad but to disobey Allah publicly and I mean by publicly just if another person comes to know if it is something between us and Allah it's very very bad I don't want to underestimate that but it's not comparable to a sin that another person comes to know because we were careless we didn't bother if my wife knows about this or my husband knows about this my father I just am concerned that not everyone knows about this but somehow other people, because of my carelessness, have understood. This makes the sin go to a very different level. Sin, when it is very confidential, is very, very bad. But it's not a matter of enmity. But when it becomes public and I didn't care about another person knowing about this, it means that I am saying to people that, Na'uzu Billah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be disobeyed. It's very bad. And some of the sins, unfortunately, have this nature that no matter what is your intention, they always give this impression. Like, for example, hijab. Hijab is a sin that it's very difficult to keep it only between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't observe hijab, it's very difficult to keep it between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or some types of dressing and things like this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as much as possible, He tries to keep this hidden and covered. So, إِذَا جَاهَرَهُ بِالْعِسْيَانِ If he appears and presents himself in the form of disobedience, still Allah satara ala dhanbihi Allah hides and covers his sin وَقَطَّى puts قِطَى puts a cover on it. وَإِذَا تَبَكَّلَ عَلَيْهِ أَحْسَبَهُ وَكَفَى And if he or she puts his trust or her trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah would be sufficient for him. So, you see, this is the mindset of Muna, uh, Rajin, this Munajat of Rajin, the people who have hope because they know Allah is very kind in giving, in taking you nearer to him and in covering your sins and also when you put your trust in him then he's extra kind maybe we can say it in this way uh, tawakkul of course it's a very important discussion in aqaid we discussed 
in spiritual uh, tools. Also, we talked about tawakkul. I don't want to repeat that discussion, but basically, if you want to better understand tawakkul, is that when you do tawakkul, something extra happens. You know, Allah is our Rabb. He always helps us. But when you trust Him, it's like you are making a new deal with Him, a new contract with Him, because He has offered to be our wakil. So when you say, Tawakkaltu ala Allah, and with this understanding you embark on something, He is more available to help you. These are not uh, ordinary things. When you say, Insha'Allah, bi'iznillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, these are sources of support that by thinking about them, you are activating. Like, there are buttons that when you press, you get extra help. Sometimes your car, if it is heavy and you are, you know, driving in a mountain, cannot go fast or it is stuck. But there is a, a special button you press, then extra engine or something else is functioning. Then you go fast. Tawakkul is this. When you press, extra power is released and you can succeed. Ilahi, man alladhi nazala bika multamisan giraka fama karayta. O Allah, who is the one who came to you? To visit you. Nazala bika. In Arabic, Nuzul is used for someone who is traveling and then comes to a station. Because, you know, sometimes it was taking days, weeks, and they had to travel during the day and then they had Manzil. Manzil means Makan Nuzul. Because they were riding and on Mount, you know, on the Mount of Hill, uh, sorry, uh, camel or horse, it was not easy to do manzel, yeah, to offload everything and you know get ready. So sometimes they had to stay one night, sometimes few nights to get rest to, you know, if they had some injury to fix. So these are called manzel. So manzel, which is also used in Erfan for stations, manazel al-sa'irin, comes from this root of nuzul, means you are coming down from the back of animal, but means you are stopping, okay? so. Who is the one who Nazala Bik has stopped his journey and come to you? Now he wants to be stationed with you. And says, you know, I am tired. I have come long way. We had lots of attacks by Shaitan. My heart is injured. My you know memories are sad. We have lost some friends on the way. So, we are in a very desperate situation. Please give us some ziyafa, some kind of hostas. Who with this condition has come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, multamis and qiraq, and has asked your hospitality, and you didn't? offer hospitality. 
you are always available for the guest yeah a kind person a gentleman a gentlewoman never refuses guests yes but especially if this guest has been traveling and is tired and injured and has lost some people you know you feel that this guest it needs more attention So, Elahi man alladhi nazala bika multamisan ghiraq Who is the one who has come to you, arrived to you Asking for your hospitality Fama qarayta And you have not given him hospitality Wa man alladhi anakha bibabika Murtajian nadaka Fama awlayta Who is the one who has come to your door Hoping your gift and generosity And you have not given him Can you imagine someone thirsty comes to house of a mu'min And says give me water and the mu'min says no Give me food, no Medicine, no, it's impossible how can then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuses his servants? If we cannot do this with people, how can Allah do this with his servants? It's impossible. Then Imam Zain al Abidin says, Ayah sunu an arja an babika bil khaybat al masrufa. Now that this is our understanding of you and our experience with you is it good is it beautiful that I return from your door while I am disappointed if you are kind with everyone and this is your norm and a standard is it good that now you send me back without giving me my hajat walastu a'rifu siwaka mawlan bil ihsan al mawsufa and what adds to the seriousness of this issue is that sometimes you don't pay attention to the guest who is asking for help because there are other people who can do this. Of course, if you are a really good person, a generous and gentleman, you don't say people to others. You try to solve the problem quickly. But sometimes, maybe you are tired or whatever, you say, go to my neighbor, go to someone else. But we don't have anyone else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would send us there. Unfortunately, many times we go to people other than Allah and knock every door. And when they don't open, we finally knock the door of Allah. But the one who has knocked the door of Allah knows. And Allah knows better that there is no other thing left. Either initially we have gone to the door of Allah or we have to ride everywhere. But now this is the last chance. Lastu a'rifu siwaka mawlan bil ihsan mawsufa. I don't know any master other than you who is characterized with ihsan. I don't have anyone in mind that is like you. How can I have hope in anyone other than you? And all the good is in your hand. And how can I have hope in others? The creation and affairs all are in for you. Everything. The whole khalqu wal amr. 
Aqtaru. This is something that if Allah had heart, would have broken his heart. <laughs> he doesn't have emotions. He doesn't have, but because since we have emotions, then sometimes we can talk emotionally to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prepare ourselves. Otherwise, he doesn't have emotion. But your emotion helps in making this relation very special. We say to Allah, Shall I cut my hope? Stop hoping you for what I need while you have given me so many things that even I didn't ask. You are a person who have always provided me and supplied me with everything that I needed, whether I asked or not, you gave me. Now that I have this great haja and I have come to you, are you going to disappoint me? Am tufqiruni ila misli wa ana a'tasimu bihamplik are you going to refer me to other people so that I beg them and ask them while I have come and I am holding on to your rope? Allah never sends someone who goes to him to fake helpers. Can a true doctor sends the patient to fake doctors a true teacher sends seekers of knowledge to fake teachers a mother father send their children to the fake fathers and mothers is impossible so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to send us to others when he has helped us with everything so far whether we asked it or not how he is going now to cut our hope so this munajat continues and our hope also continues but as you see how imam alayhi salam beautifully within the boundaries of aql and theology and philosophy so everything is there but how much is able to develop this conversation into a very personal, intimate discussion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this helps a lot. You can only ask Allah for something, but when you back up it with this beautiful conversation, then it's a transformation. It endears you more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and improves your relation. We hope that inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would enable us to have some taste of that relation that existed between him and his awliya. If we can taste what anbiya, awliya, imams used to feel when they pray they're praying when they were talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we taste that then we would never be pleased with anything else we ask Allah to help us to taste and experience that and then share it with other people Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen